We've got the Bifaley V5 on deck today. We're going to test it and compare it to a few other Bifaley mics and others, and uh, focus more on voiceover since this seems to be a highly regarded, super cheap mic in the VO community. It's 55% nerdy stuff, and it's coming right up. So, good day and welcome to the Time Preservation Society. I'm Kevin McAllister, and I'm, I'm not home alone. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit that bell notification so you can be notified the minute new content drops. Cheers. This is the last by Faley mic I'm going to be reviewing here, I think. Unless they send me the U87 clone to review, I'm just not very interested in anything else from them at this time. But I have very little, small, tiny sliver amount of hope uh, that that might happen, them sending me the U87, since by Faley didn't even want to send me this microphone. Uh, I asked, but they wanted to send me their cheapest dynamic microphone instead. Uh, no thanks. I didn't buy this mic myself either. It was sent to me as a gift from a viewer and a friend of mine, the compelling novelist Jeff Stewart. You can check out some killer books from Jeff Stewart like Jank, uh, The Velocity of Ink, and the much-lauded epic March of Time and Skin, available on Amazon and some other booksellers. I helped Jeff create a voiceover chain for his audiobook narrations, so he sent me the V5. Uh, so thanks very much, Jeff. At long last, the V5 review. I've reviewed other Bifaley mics on this channel, three of them. And it, uh, it, it all started with the best cheap mic in the world, the Bifaley C414, which you can watch right here. I went on to review the V10 and then the KK707. I also did a battle of the Bifaley's kind of video. Back then, the C414 was the best of the Bifaley's, if you ask me. And the KK707 was the worst. I purchased the C414 Bifaley and the V10 myself, and Bifaley used my videos that I made about those to help sell more mics. That's fine. When they finally did send me a mic to review, they chose one of their worst because they thought sending any of their better mics was too expensive. Or at least that's how I perceived it after talking with them. There is a language barrier, so maybe the translation was off. I don't know. Either way, it's safe to say that after my review of the KK707, they stopped responding to me. Was it something I said? What can I say about by Faley? They're cheap, and in more ways than one. But they have something special that so many other wicked cheap mic companies seem to lack. I, I don't know what that is, but, uh, but it's something. I'm sure of it. So there's that. These mics are made in China, which is fine. Many very good mics are also made there. One of my favorite mic companies, SE Electronics, is all made in China, and they're amazing products. And that's all I know about Bifaley. It's a mystery wrapped up in a bargain bin off-brand, probably made with lead Enigma. So you've obviously been hearing me on the V5 all this time. What do you think of it? Does it work for VO? Because that's who I've seen talking about this mic, the VO peeps. So let's have a closer look. It's a really cool looking mic. I'll give it that. It's all metal except for a small section on the back, which we'll get to in a minute. It's kind of a dark gray and light gray mixture that has a texture that is reminiscent of an unrefined granite rock or a, or a nail file. I filed my nails with it. The texture is actually pretty awesome. It has a lighter gray metal grill that has a little give, so be careful with that. Under the grill is a smaller grill that is made out of window screen. There is no foam to help reduce plosives, so also be careful with that. Condensers don't like plosives or high-velocity launched saliva. It says by Faley in a raised and embossed logo that seems to change designs mic to mic. One day they'll settle on one they like. I just know it. 
It also says recording studio microphone in fancy writing. I think they think that people are impressed with the words recording studio. Actually, that's, that's kind of true, at least for me. Those words make me feel all warm and cozy, but not written on a mic. Don't write it on a mic. It has an XLR connector and requires just regular, unleaded, low-octane phantom power. None of the premium or premium plus stuff. Just regular, good old 48-volt phantom power. But when we turn it over, we can see a really cool visual feature. It's a semi-frosted window that looks in at the PCB board. So you can see the guts of this guy without opening it up. I had wondered about that. I thought from the pictures it might be a sticker that's, you know, a picture of the inside. But I am pleased to report that it actually is a window looking in. It also says V5 and Made in China in the same ambiguously fancy writing that is almost illegible. It weighs 400 grams, which is almost a pound. It measures... Oh, hold on a second. Let me just find my trusty old measuring tape here. You know... This measuring tape was manufactured by the Umbrella Corporation sometime in the last 30 years. I picked it up in Raccoon City back in 2002. Anyway, it measures just over 7 inches from stem to top, 2 inches wide, and 1 inch deep. I went with inches because, you know, they're whole numbers. The metric would have had decimal points, so I, I guess that's a win for you Americans. I think this mic came out in 2023, which was Killers of the Flower Moon and Napoleon Ago. I bet you thought I forgot to do that bit. That's right. I keep you on your toes. It's my job. But how does it compare against the other Bifaley mics? Let's find out. We shall start with the V10. And now I'm on the V10. This is one of the more popular Bifaley mics, and one that I've reviewed in the past. This is the sound of the V10. It was, I think, 80 bucks when I first reviewed it, but it may have gone up in price since then. Also, the V10 is a little bit noisier, so there's that. And now I'm going to switch back to the V5 so you can hear it again and you can compare. Okay, here we go. And now we're back on the V5. What did you think of the V10 in comparison to the V5? Is it better? Worse? Same? Let me know. Moving on to the C414, also by Bifaley. Here we go. And now I'm on the Bifaley C414. This was the first mic I reviewed of the Bifaleys and my favorite of them. I'm not sure if it's still $50 but it must be pretty close to it. So yeah, this is the sound of this C414, which in comparison now feels a bit muffled. Hmm. All right, let's go back to the V5 again so you can know for sure. And now we're back on the V5. Which one did you like better? The C414 or the V5? Do let us know. And now just for shorts and stiffens, let's compare some higher priced mics. Let's hear the, uh, Rode NT1. And this is the Rode NT1. This is a very nice lower cost mic. It's rounded and smooth, a bit dark. I think this mic is a fantastic mic for VO and other applications. It's currently like uh, $269 USD, and I think it's well worth purchasing as a first mic if you're interested. Okay, back to the V5 for comparison. And now we're back on the V5. Which one would you choose, the Rode NT1 or the V5? How about the worst mic in all existence? The Rode NT1A, my nemesis. Let's do it. This is a sound of the absolute piece of shit, Rode NT1A. It's a garbage mic, and Rode should do a recall and issue everyone who bought one a check for $1,000 for pain and suffering. But hey, that's just my opinion. You might like it, and that's just fine. It's all subjective, and remember, I'm just some guy. It's 249 USD right now. That's how much this mic is. 
Uh, and that's about $1,249 more money than it should be. Okay, <laughs> enough of this. Back to the V5. And now we're back on the V5. If you ask me, the Rode NT1A is the worst mic ever made. And any mic, including two paper clips, an elastic band, and a tin can, would sound better. The Rode NT1A should be burned with fire. Okay, so let's hear the SE Electronics SE4400, my favorite large diaphragm condenser that's under $500. All right, let's do it. So this is the amazing SE4400. This mic is incredible for so many reasons. I have left all the switches on standard cardioid mode, just regular, just so it match all the rest. The SE4400 goes for about 499 USD, and it is so worth it. If you could buy any mic for under $500 and, and you can afford it, I can't recommend this mic enough. It is so very impressive. What do you think? It sounds great. An interesting note is the SE4400 is also made in China. But to be fair, it's handmade with the most premium parts and under extremely tight quality control. Okay, back to the V5 for comparison. And then we might just do one more. And I'm back on the V5 again. Uh, so you're getting a good sample of some stuff. So let's just keep going. Let's just do, I don't know, one more. And now just for fun, let's compare it to my favorite microphone I've ever tried, the Loughton Audio FC387 Atlantis, because why not? And this is the mega amazing, truly astounding, mind-blowing, killer, super wicked awesome Loughton Audio FC387 Atlantis. <gasps> As I stated in the past, I could not love a human baby as much as I love this mic. It's the mic dreams are made of. And my favorite non-modeling mic of all time. It's currently $1,758 US dollars, give or take a few, and worth every penny, if you ask me. Just like the SE4400, I have it on cardioid mode, with all switches set to normal. If you can afford this mic, you'll never need another mic. Sometimes I hold it in my hands just to feel it close to me. Okay, back to the V5 for comparison. And now we're back on the V5. Let's do a quick toggle through all those mics again, except faster. For this, I'll read a paragraph from Jeff Stewart's novel, March of Time and Skin. My brother always called me a loner. I never thought about it, yet I always felt better when I was alone. Nothing really phases a man who likes to be alone. I imagined that the strongest and most interesting people were loners. There is a line between a loner and a sociopath, a line similar to the insane and the unsane, a line between the dead and the ignorant. I thought that if a man was an unsane loner, neither ignorant or dead, then he was all right though I hadn't seen such a man. I gave up my thoughts and put on my headphones and blasted Sabbath. And there you have it. So how much does the V5 cost and where can you get one? The V5 is the most expensive by Faley mic I've reviewed on this channel so far and probably the last one. But it's still really cheap. It's about $100 USD at the time of this video. I say about, about $100, because the prices seem to shift around like the market price of lobster at your local fine dining establishment. But fine dining, this is not. So 100 bucks plus close to $30 for shipping, depending on where you are in the world. So do I think it's worth $130 USD? The body alone is worth that price. I've known a few people who buy these mics and then swap out the capsules or the guts to make it even better. Uh, but this is straight, raw, out of the box. I'd love to one day swap out capsules, you know, on these mics, some of these cheap mics, and see what happens. But I don't because, you know, I need to keep these mics, you know, stock, you know, for this channel for reviews. 
I will be swapping the nasty NT1A capsule out with an Arian Audio K47 capsule or something like that in the future with, uh, with no worries about ruining it because f*** that mic. And uh, that'll just about do it for me. Oh, and do you guys give up or are you thirsty for more? Bye now. In transmission. And watch those other videos. I'm not going to bother focusing. Yes. These videos here. Watch them. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye.